Hey guys, Steve here from PC Budget Solutions, and I don't have a lot of content coming out in the immediate future, some stuff going on for next week. But in the meantime, I figure I'd give you guys a how to video. So, this is what we got going on today. Now, I already did one of these, and I'll kind of show you a brief overview. But we're going to take apart a graphics card, we're going to clean up the thermal paste, put some new thermal paste on, and put it back together. Um, if you run the issues with thermals and things like that, I've actually have had a GTX 1080 brand new where I dropped 10 degrees Celsius just by replacing the thermal paste that comes on it. So, I welcome you guys to the ride. Let's take a look and see what it looks like taking apart a graphics card and putting it back together to get some, hopefully, better performance. So, we're going to need a couple things. First, your graphics card. In this case, uh, we have a GTX 560 Ti. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, just like such. You're going to need your thermal paste of choice. So, Arctic Silver is good. I'm actually using this Cooler Master stuff right here. It works pretty good. I've had pretty good success with it. Then you're going to need something like Q-tips or Kleenex or something that won't shred much though, so don't get the really soft Kleenex. And isopropic alcohol as close to 100% as possible. Today we are working with 91%. So that's pretty much all the tools we need. Let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and remove these screws. It's not a bad idea to loosen them up in a cross pattern. It's definitely a good idea to tighten them in a cross pattern. So this is not a step you necessarily have to follow, but it also makes it so whenever you are taking everything apart, if there's unneeded tension, it won't spring open and cause things to potentially crack or bend further than what they probably should. So it may not be too bad of an idea, but we're going to take out these four screws here. And we're going to put these off to the side. It does look like, however, that these screws are all the same. So, that's a good thing. That one, yeah. So, in this case, we can put them back on whatever. Do note that most GP manufacturers will try to void your warranty if you take these apart because there's usually a warranty void sticker. So, keep that in mind. If you don't feel comfortable with arguing with them about it, because technically they can they can't really do that, but they try anyway. Okay. So it doesn't want to come apart. That could be for a couple of reasons. And I'm going to bank on those reasons being that it's just old and stuck. I don't see a reason why this would not want to come off. And I was correct. So, this one is very easy to work with. Now note, there is a fan header there, so we're going to want to remove that. Put this aside. Now, these older GPUs, um, there's really nothing super crazy to worry about. There's not a lot of exposed components per se, like we don't even have VRM heat sinks here. So, all we're going to do for this is literally, I put some isopropic alcohol on here. We're just going to clean this off. Wow. When it's like this tough to get off, you know that this could very well have had some heat issues. And you definitely want to get it as clean as possible. You really don't want to leave any residue there. So that's good. Now, for something like this, I'm going to use a lot more than what I usually do just because how big the die is, right? So this piece right here covers this whole die. So I'm going to do the line method. And I usually do use the line method, sometimes use the dot depending how big the die is. So in this case, that should be good. So we just have a little line right across. Now, First things first, we don't need to do anything else. There's no thermal pads. We're going to plug this piece back in. So you guys can see what I'm doing here. Do that first. Make sure we get this to line up. And once we have it lined up, I was going to keep it turned over, but I'm gonna have to put some pressure on it because of the way the GPU sits. Here's what I'll do. There's a lip 
right at the end here, and it was pushing up on it. It wasn't laying flat. Now, this is very, very, very important. So please pay attention, guys. This is where we want to go ahead and screw these down in in a cross pattern. So you just get them maybe about anywhere from a quarter to a halfway down. Definitely don't want to go all the way. Just enough so they're gripping. And last one here. Well, there's two more we have to do, which I'll get those started, but I'll get those all the way down here in a minute. And last one. Now, some things to note here as we're getting these back down. Stuff like my RX Vega um, uses a reference design, so the thing with that is there are screws that also also hold the fan into place. So that actually made it far more difficult to do that. So do keep that in mind. You also can run into anywhere from from two to four different screw types when dealing with uh, putting a graphics card together, taking part or put it back together rather. So it's a good idea to kind of, you know, put them on a sheet of paper and mark where they go, especially if you haven't done one of these before. And voila, this one's done. So we're going to move on to one more card, just so you can see a little bit more of an elaborate one, and we'll be done. We went ahead and I took out all the screws and everything. For the, for the middle four here that hold the actual heat sink down to the GPU, I put those aside because they are a little bit different. These other ones, I think all but like one are the same. I think that actually the one, go, or there's two of them that go down here and here. So that part's done. Now, I've already taken this apart once before. I happen to know this one luckily actually comes right apart as well. First things first is to remove the heat sink fan. So that part's done. And then from here, you pull and we're separated. So the reason why I want to show you guys this, and I'm gonna to have to redo the thermal paste, unfortunately, I just did this one though not too long ago, is these have thermal pads. And if they're coming off, you want to make sure you get them on as close as you possibly can. You really don't want to touch them. What I did was kind of bad. Well, I'll go over and fix that in a minute but they go over top of things like VRMs. So for example, these purple ones right here cover these VRMs. So it's very important that they're really accurate. These cover this. And then on the back plate, we're gonna leave the back plate on. There's thermal pads behind the back plate because there's more chips back there. So just be very, very, very careful that you're not playing with that stuff too much because you definitely don't want any of your grease or anything like that touching the thermal pads. So. I'm going to give these a really quick rundown with some isopropic alcohol. There's actually some thermal paste that going on them. I guess I was a little bit not careful, but you don't want to push too hard because you can start eroding away at the thermal paste, or uh, uh, at the uh, pads, rather. So we're going to clean this off. Looks like I have to do a better job at that. Now, this die over here, which I'm going to show you guys in a minute, it's more of an exposed die. So, this is why I want to show you guys two instances, an older GPU and a relatively newer design GPU. Because this one you have to be a little bit more careful with. So, this is an exposed chip, essentially. So, just note that, like, you know how I'm really careless with my screwdrivers, right? I'm always letting them drop and fall and everything. You don't want to do that here. Very, very important you don't let that happen. So this is where a Q-tip, especially if you're taking off some really old thermal paste, this one's only been off for a couple days, a Q-tip can come in handy to get into the crevices. I did use a Q-tip the first time that I took this apart. So for this one, we're going to grab... Mm, I have some left here. I have some, I don't know, what, where the other thermal paste? Ah, here it is. We're going to go ahead and grab the other thermal paste. We're going to make sure this is completely cleaned off here. And again, I'm going to use a much smaller line. Really don't want to put a lot on here. 
That's probably good. I think uh, it might be a little too much, but we'll find out. So, what we will do from here is we will place the heat sink back on. Now, a lot of times the fans stay connected to the heat sink. In this case, it separates. So, just be wary of that whenever you're going to put this together. Now, this one, you have to make sure everything lines up. So, you have a heat sink and a fan array that has to line up properly. So, that's the tricky part. So right now, as you guys can see, I'm about I'm about lined up here. You can actually see down there we're pretty close to being lined up. So we're going to go ahead and get these four screws put in here. And I've got to slide this down so you guys can see. Again, just far enough for it to grab. Two, three... And last one. Now I'm just getting these started again. You definitely don't you want to get as even pressure as possible here. So I'm going to get these screwed down all the way here because the rest of it really isn't going to make much of a difference. Okay. There. And there. And then the rest of these are going to go down. Now, this isn't really that big of a deal, but I will screw these all the way down. Good. Just because it's already, you know, the pressure is pretty much even on the actual plate itself. So, those two black ones are the ones that, that go a lot deeper. So, that's why I kind of kept those aside. They're very similar to the, um, one that goes on the actual plate itself so I'm still kind of doing this like a cross pattern to a degree two more and then we are done my friends and hopefully this helped you guys learn how to change thermal paste and take care of your graphics card they're back together now it only took us a couple minutes so we're good to go. So, thank you guys for tuning in to this how-to guide featuring how to take apart a graphics card, replace a the thermal paste, and put one back together. We looked at two of them today, something a little bit on the newer side, newer designs, and something a lot simpler looking. So, two different areas, but essentially similar concepts. If you did like this video, definitely like it. If you didn't like the video, do me a favor, don't just dislike, leave me a comment, tell me why you didn't dislike it. Give me good criticism, don't just dislike and leave because how's that going to help me make better content if I don't know what the problem is. We're going to put links to, we'll say, this graphics card in the description. Let's, uh, let's also put some Arctic Silver Thermal Paste down there since I did show that. And some screwdrivers, uh, we'll, we'll do some screwdrivers down there too. So, if you guys click on those links, purchase something during that session that does help me out a lot. It does give me a kickback through Amazon, so I definitely appreciate that. But as always, guys, this is Steve from PC Budget Solutions, and I'll see you later on down the road.